Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our short live. This is a new series that we've got going on, the hashtag live at five series where we talk for about 10 or 15 minutes on any given topic. We're just waiting for our third guest to jump in. As ever, we are brought to you in partnership with go to coffeedog.ie and order chef's blend. There's a huge competition coming your way in uh going live on Saturday, Friday morning to announce that, but every morning you can wake up with Chef. Yeah, a competition can run that one. We go to coffeedog.ie and order Chef's Blend. It is truly the best coffee that uh, you can wake up with in the morning to start your day off. Cool. There we go. On today's show, I'm just going to try and bring my second my guest second in. Guest there we go. Hopefully, I'm getting some feedback Hi, over uh, there, but we'll keep <laughs> How are you doing? We'll keep going. I'm joined by two fab people today. Yeah, I am. I'm getting a feedback. Of, uh, let me just uh, take that one off there. That might be the way. Uh, no, it's still happening. No, I think it's gone. Okay, well we'll crack on. Um, can't uh, the uh, guest has muted themselves? Oh, what are we talking about today? Well, today we are talking about um, World Rugby's uh, global new competition called WXV, and to quote World Rugby, I'm going to show you exactly what it means in just a minute, and you are all welcome to the, the show, so stick your comments or if you have any thoughts. Um, I'm joined today by Debs Knife from 365 Sporting Days, amongst other things, one of the greatest writers that we have in sports, and we're joined by former Blue Bulls, Ireland, and current, still current Ulster women's prop, Ilse Van Staden. Ladies, how are you and welcome? Very good, thank you. Good. Hi, Joe. Are... All good. Good. And I know you've just you are still at work, just come from the butchery. We are getting a little bit of uh, yeah. feedback in there. Uh, not so worry, we'll continue on. So let me just, uh, I'll try some things. I'll try. And... Before we, uh, we're going to show you a video uh, from World Rugby, which explains it all. But this is what it's been said about it. Um, a landmark global women's rugby union competition has been launched by the sports uh, international governing body, World Rugby. Uh, World Rugby indeed are investing 6.4 million in the WXV tournament due to begin in 2023, year after the, the Women's uh, Rugby World Cup, which has been unfortunately put back a year. The competition will have three tiers, offering uh, uh, consistent international test match opportunities to 16 teams to help them prepare for the 2025 Rugby World Cup, Women's Rugby World Cup. World Rugby Chairman Sir Bill Beaumont held a landmark moment and said the plan would accelerate the development of the women's game. Right, what we're going to do is we are going to show you this video and it will explain it all to you. Stand by. change in women's elite rugby, a new calendar, a new competition, a revolution in the global game. This is WXB. For the first time, a unified 15s calendar will transform the international stage. Every match will count. A stronger, more compelling platform for players, fans, broadcasters and stakeholders. The World Rugby calendar will be made up of two windows. Regional competitions are year-round, but must be completed by mid-June before each global contest. And the new three-tier WXV format takes place in a seven-week period across September and October, except in World Cup years. Regional competitions will be the only way qualifying is decided for the global phase. This includes the launch of a cross-continent tournament between Canada, USA, Australia and New Zealand to decide who makes it into the top group of the new WXV format. The top three teams from this event will be joined in Group 1 by the top three from the Women's Six Nations. This will be a standalone tournament in one location, played as a cross-pool format. There will be no promotion or relegation in the first cycle. It's almost the same setup for those teams contesting Group 2. This will be made up of two from Europe, one from Oceania, Asia and Africa, plus whoever comes fourth in the new cross-continent tournament. Crucially, whichever regional position finishes bottom in this group will be relegated to Group 3. Group 3 will also be in one venue, but played in a round-robin league table format made up of four teams, two from Europe, one from Asia 
and the winning nation from a playoff between sides from Africa and South America. The group winners head up to group two. The fate of the bottom team will be decided by a playoff with the next best side according to the World Rugby Women's Rankings. So there it is. For the first time in rugby's history, a new revolutionary women's 15s calendar will align regional and global stages to provide bigger, better and bolder competition than ever before. Wowza, 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 wowza. So what do we think, uh, Ills? Debbie, start us off. Um, great move for the women's game. Uh, great move for World Rugby. What are your thoughts? I think it's a fantastic move for the women's game. There's a saying that I'm very, very fond of, which is you cannot be what you cannot see, <clears throat> which was actually given by an American activist. And hopefully this is actually going to get this onto the television so that girls are seeing women playing rugby and actually it'll encourage them to go towards it. So I think it's a fantastic plan. Superb. Ilsa. Again, I'm I'm with Debbie on that. I'm a big believer in if you can't see it, you can't be it. So if if you have more if you have more female rugby players on television, you've got more female role models in sport, which means that the younger girls, the younger generation of players, will will automatically start start gravitating towards it. Um, which is a fantastic, fantastic thing, because you can't you can't keep a sport alive if there's no players. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um it's it's everything almost, uh, ladies. That um it's everything almost that uh, world rugby wanted to do with the with the with the men's game, um, and that didn't eventually come off. But the the fact that this has really just come from nowhere, um, and has and has just gone into you know, I, th I mean, I, promotion, relegation, all of the things that we're talking about. We've been arguing the toss now for how many years <laughs> about Six Nations and the, the European Championship they've been to, and then the men's, and the men couldn't agree. And fair play to the girls have just gone off and, uh, <laughs> and got it done. Um, and, and it'd be great to see who was behind uh, the, the whole thing. Another CEO was just changed over uh, and where they had anything to do with that. But there was just almost the, the political situation, no disrespect to the men in World Rugby, that made it too bloody difficult for it to happen. Um, I think it's going to, I think it's going to grow and develop the game exponentially uh, for, for the for, in the for the girls' game. And and as you say, the the pull through uh, from uh, for the next generation is 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 going to be great. Um, we haven't heard anything yet about sort of TV rights and sponsorship and stuff like that. But Deb's big part of that for you. I think it has to be. I mean, the, the other thing, I was looking at the results of the Women's Six Nations, you know, and we've got we've got one team that's got people that are being paid to play rugby. And therefore, no surprise, absolutely, you know, no surprises, England have won 16 titles. You know, you can't, you can't be playing a game as physical as rugby and then going off and doing a day job. You know, I think there, there was a Bristol player, wasn't there, recently injured, who was basically almost having to do crowdfunding to raise money to help her to survive. You know, uh, you, you have to hope this money actually feeds down to the players and we can have professional women playing this game across all of the countries and things can start evening up. You know, I, I saw England play um, Scotland a few years back and they won 89-0. Uh, which was uh, quite honestly, that was an awful game of rugby. No, nobody wants to see that happening, you know. So let's, yeah, let's hope the six point four million seems to be guaranteed, and hopefully, you know, I, I will go and I would go on a trip to go and watch one of these rounds of these competitions, Absolutely. and I'm sure others will too. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, Ilse, you, you you've experienced this firsthand, haven't you, when you played for Ireland? Um, having to sort of travel down from Belfast, and it's no disrespect to the RFU. It's just the the <clears throat> necessary. It's the funding and timing, and it will help in the grow. But you know, do you, for, from from somebody like yourself who effectively paid your own way to play for your adopted nation, um, how does this make you feel now? The the potential for for the next generation of Ilson Stardens coming through. I wish I was twenty years younger. Exactly. I literally wish I was 20 years younger because it, uh, it is a phenomenal opportunity. And if it's managed right, um, 
it will it will mean that and like like Debbie said, um in the Six Nations it was always about beating England. That's a bit like with the men. It's it's not about who wins. It's about who you want to lose. Everybody always wants England to lose. Yeah. Um, and in 2017, when I when I played for Ireland, uh, we came second to 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 England in that in that St Patrick's Day um, clash that we had in Donnybrook. And yes, I think it will make a massive difference if if you have if you have a team of women that they train on the same professional standing as the competition, then you, you, you can only get better. You can't compare apples with pears if you're, if you're standing at an apple stand. Um, so in order for people to, to compete, we need to, to have a level playing field. And in the Six Nations as well, this tournament actually makes who comes third and who comes fourth Absolutely. It, 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 it brings the competition back to the Six Nations, which is a really, really, really good thing. Because you have the likes of France has improved massively in recent years. You have um, the Italians who came out of nowhere in the last two years and took a couple of big scalps. Yep. So um, it's, I do think it's, it's just if the money can filter down, into into where it's really needed, not just stay at at the unions, but the girls actually be and I don't want to say be treated fairly, because it is still an amateur sport. It is about getting like like Lindsay Pete said, it's about getting asses on seats. And if if there isn't if it if there, there isn't that, if the spectators isn't there, there's there's not gonna be, be that much fund available. So it is about it going down, getting getting support for for the girls, but also then making sure that it is supported by people, that people come out, that people are willing to travel. So that is the big hype around around this whole W fifteen thing. I think it's a yeah, superb, um, and I love the way that <clears throat> um, I haven't seen it yet. I was surprised I didn't because this broke last week, and we thought we'd wait a few days until this week. <coughs> Excuse me, and see whether anything else came out of it. Um, and I was surprised that we didn't see any of that because you know there's always a big grudge somewhere, isn't there? Because a number of them that would be in our days. <coughs> but I was um, surprised that I didn't see anybody saying, "Well, it's just like a rugby world cup, you know, it's the same thing, you know, why have it?" Because that's what a lot of people were saying about the, the similar type concept for the men's game. But I think this is, um, you know, this is almost it, it's a it's a layered transition. Each year, then you've got the Rugby World Cup, and then you start the process again. Um, you know, we, we there's a lot of people out there who knock football, but that, that's what happens. You've got this build-up where I always love the aspect where a bloody minnow can sort like it said, like Italy came from nowhere and took some scalps. That how good was that for the game? No, um, <clears throat> I know realistically um, we have got. Um, I think it, I think it makes it stronger for the, the Women's Rugby World Cup when it comes around, because you've had more merit-based in getting there. And I think you're right, ladies. That drags the level of rugby up. It must do. And if it takes five years or eight years... I mean, when this first broke, I thought to myself, it's a bit like the rugby championship in Europe now, so the second tier. Um, you know, you're seeing more of that now online and, you know, and the clips on the TV and stuff, the highlights... Wouldn't it be great to be able to see this and follow this through as well? And it's the start, I believe, of a bit of parity for <clears throat> the women's game. And you're right, the, the, the money must come down. So that's 6.4 million. That's, that's quite a bit, but there's a lot to go across. Doesn't say anything about the TV rights, doesn't say anything about the sponsorship on top. But Debs, correct me if I'm wrong. It's only England or the England are the only women, the only professional side in the Six Nations. I think some of France do, but but apart from that, everybody else is amateur, correct? That's my understanding. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I'm a, as a I will mention Saracens. <laughs> we'll forget I'm a Saracens fan most of the time, but you know, look, I look at the um, the level of play has has changed incredibly in recent years in women's rugby, I think. Yep. Um, and I think we need to show that to more people 
you know, I think being, we've all been sitting in our homes, haven't we? So not been able to go out and watch live sport. So I think the women's competition here has had a lot more in the way of views. Um, you know, and there there is often scant respect towards the games that women are playing. Um, the more we can see the women playing at the highest level, the, the better for me. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that it's that whole thing about being aspirational, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Greg, go away. Let's hope that <laughs> cat doesn't come on. <laughs> we missed the cat. People are missing the cat. The cat's becoming famous, Debs. John Hennessy. <laughs> John, great to hear from you, mate. I hope you're well. Um, it also needs uh, to make uh, it uh, professional uh, in uh, in the likes of uh, Ireland, Scotland and Wales so that they can improve the chances. I think eventually it will. I think, Ilse, you'll get that pull through there. There's always been the willingness, hasn't there? You know, even when you were with, with the squad. But, but there just wasn't the, the reality. There just wasn't the funding there. And again, it, everything is about time. But you can see the excitement in you. Do you see any any downsides also to this at all from a from a... Uh, from the, the elite level sort of that you've played at? Do, is there any downside to this for you? I think she might have. Ilse, have you still got us? Oh. She, she was a Debs, thoughts? Any any downsides at all? I can't find any personally at the moment. The only downside that I can see is is that there will be a massive disconnect. We're, um, we're, we're, we're losing your signal there in the car, so sorry. Uh, we, we didn't come back up. We'll come yeah, back in and we'll try on. again. There you go. We'll, we'll, we'll come back in a second. Yeah. Uh, um, in and out. It, it's going, it's dipping in and out on the uh, on the signal. Uh, not, not, not to worry. But grateful for you to jump in the car briefly, um, uh, Debs. Yeah, any any downsides for you at all? Not that I can think of. You know, I, I, looking in twenty nineteen, Australia played four Test matches. You know, how, how are they possibly going to improve as a team playing only four games across a whole year? Um, no, I, I think. I mean, as an aside, we obviously want more women playing this game but actually anything that makes girls exercise is a positive it is. You know, it, it, and it and rugby is a game for all shapes and sizes you know you've you've not got your pilates people or your you know we've got people that can actually lead girls to want to exercise and it's fun isn't it you know rugby's fun well, we uh, we look forward to uh, uh, hearing more about this World Rugby WXV competition uh, designed to be a global competition and to align the rugby calendar. Uh, what what's the what's the best takeaway, Ilsa, for you? Um, hopefully, you can you can hear us now. What's the what's the greatest thing? Well, when you heard about this, what 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 was the feeling inside? Oh, bless! I'm not, I'm not sure whether she can uh, can hear. I was just, I, I, I was really excited, and I'm, I'm excited for the girls who are. I can hear you. Okay, cool. But I don't. Can you hear me? No, I don't think you can hear me at all. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Can you hear me? Super. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, 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 I think the big takeaway for me is just that I am really excited for the younger, the younger stream, the next girls coming through. But the one thing that I think people need to remember is there has to be a serious reconnect between national sides and national competitions and provincial competitions. Because you will never, if, if you just, if you pump all the skills into your national side and let go of your grassroots, you're going to be in serious trouble. And I do believe that now is the time that all the national setups needs to seriously look at their grassroots and make sure that they've got a proper feeder system in place. Absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Great. <clears throat> well, I, 20 minutes, not bad for a little 10-minute gap. That, that's, uh, 
Um, Elsa Van Staden, current uh, uh, Ulster women's prop, former uh, Blue Bull Centurion in South Africa and Island Prop in 2017. Thank you for your time. <laughs> you got to get back to your butchery and everything. Uh, love to Alana and young Alexander there. Deb Knight from 365 Sport and Days. Excellent. Thanks very much for uh, discussing the the uh, World Rugby WXV competition. And we've got one more comment there from John Hennessy before we finish off. Would it make a difference by bringing in private investment into uh, the rugby unions um, in the Celtic countries where it would uh, benefit both women and men's rugby, allowing the unions to concentrate on development? That's a great question, John. Uh, that's a great idea. I, I think with uh, the likes of CVC coming in uh, to the Six Nations, and I think this, uh, I think we're going to see a lot more stuff changing over the next few years. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's it. <coughs> we're going to sort of wrap up now. We've been looking at uh, World Rugby's new global competition and a way to align the calendar called WXV, the Women's 15 game, which is r massively going to uh, increase uh, the game as we move forward. My thanks again to Debs Knight and to Ilta van Staden. No live from five, uh, no live at five tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we've got the Ulster Rugby Roundup show at half past eight. Nigel and Dave uh, will be on hosting that with a whole range of uh, guests and we got a special fan and five as well and um, so uh, everything to do with Ulster rugby that was flit into ireland that will flit into the six nations and it was expands into everything else until then i've been big joe shep founder and chief local three bod rugby group you've been watching our new mini short at live at five ilsa debs take care we'll chat to you very very soon stay safe <laughs>